This is Yossi Klein Halevi, and I have the great pleasure of sharing with you uh, my one of my passions, uh, which is Israeli popular music. Israeli music is the most beloved art form among Israelis. Uh, it is where the the Israeli soul is most fully expressed. Well, let's uh, let's begin with the first song, Shir Hashayara. The Song of the Caravan by the legendary Arik Einstein and friends. <laughs> And this is the great song celebrating the ingathering of the exiles. The song uh, was released uh, in the 1970s and has lost none of its popularity. This is the song that I would call the unofficial anthem of the ingathering. And it has one of my favorite lines from all of Israeli music. That is, Zohi Harpakat Chayenu. This is the great adventure of our lives, because we really feel that this collective adventure is also, in some sense, the great personal adventure uh, of each of us. Moving on to the next song. This is a, uh, a new song of the past year or so uh, by the terrific band Ewa, which sings in Yemenite Arabic. And this is a song called Hana Mashu Aliyama. This ain't Yemen. It is the lament of that first generation of Jews from Yemen, from other Arab countries, who came to the new land, the holy land, and expected to be embraced by their brothers and sisters, and instead were often met with contempt, uh, with discrimination, made to feel that they were second-class Israelis. Today's Israel is very different from the Israel of the 1950s and 60s. The culture of the Mizrahim, of the Jews of Arab countries, has become uh, not just part of the mainstream, but I would say, in large measure, defines the Israeli cultural mainstream today. Well, the great saga of the Mizrahim is to have moved from the periphery of Israeli society into the center. The third song, Atali Eretz, by Yardena Arazi, is a tender and tentative love song to the land of Israel. And I say tentative because it describes the complexity of the Jewish return home to a land that we hadn't known for 2,000 years, except in our imagination. The song spoke to me very deeply as a new immigrant, as someone who, who needed to learn the land, needed to learn uh, the flowers, the seasons, uh, the texture, uh, a land that, that, that I loved, but mostly in the abstract. And that is very much the experience of a new immigrant here and also of the Jewish people. The next song, Midinak Tana, Little Country, by Danny Sanderson, uh, originally sung by his band Kaveret in the 1970s, um, one of the most popular Israeli bands of all time. And this is a remake actually done for in the time of Corona. So you'll see each of the musicians are sitting uh, in their own homes. And this is a wry and wistful love song to the little state of Israel. In a place far away, 
אספנו את עצמנו, הבאנו חברינו, we gathered ourselves, we brought our friends, שחנו קצת שמיים, we rented a little sky, two houses, two horses, three trees. פתחנו ארץ חדשה. We opened a new year. And there's something in that humor, in that affection, in that irony, that is very much part of how Israelis feel. about uh, the relationship to Shem. The hard-edged irony of Ez Medina. What a country. Eli Luzon's great takedown of government bureaucracy and corruption. This began very much as a protest song within the Mizrahi community, but it has long since become the cry of the little Israeli who feels oppressed by a indifferent leadership, overtaxed, over-bureaucratized, in addition to all of the existential issues. <laughs> the next song, Esther, is by Ehud Banai, whom I would regard as the greatest living by Israeli singer, troubadour, poet, musician, the poet of the Israeli soul. In this song, he combines his own uh, infatuation with a woman who seems to be half mad with mysticism and a longing for God. And in the background, the army is moved back into Lebanon. And when I first heard this song sometime in the 1980s as, as a new immigrant, I was stunned because I suddenly felt that this is a window into the Israel that I intuited was there. but I hadn't had the access to it yet. I went on a pilgrimage to Ehud Bana. I went to his studio in South Tel Aviv. And uh, I wanted to thank him for this song. And I said to him, you know, your song, Esther, made me an Israeli. Sof Onata Tapuzim, end of the orange season. The band is Tammuz, short-lived. It was founded in 1974-75, shortly after the Yom Kippur War. Israel's first genuine hard rock band produced only one album. That album changed the nature of Israeli music. The song is ostensibly about coming of age on the kibbutz. It's about uh, a romance with a foreign volunteer on the kibbutz. But this song became an anthem for something much larger. Sof Onata Tapuzim, end of the orange season, became a kind of a metaphor for the end of the old labor Zionist Israel, the end of the Israel that was symbolized by the kibbutz. And so this song really is, is, is one of those transitional moments that tells a story much larger than perhaps it initially intended. The next song, the Hakim the Mashiach, Waiting for Mashiach, is an extension of Sofo Nata Tapuzim, uh, of the decline of labor Zionist Israel, but 10 years later. It's now 1985. We are deeply into the uh, government's uh, food. Uh, Israel is going through 400% inflation. Stock market has just crashed. People are leaping off of rooftops. And this is the dark side of the transition from socialist Israel to capitalist Israel. 
מתבלבל בעיניו, נפרד בצפון, ארצי אלי, בעם יועץ, אחר הצהריים. And Mechakim Lemashiach is again one of those songs that has become a metaphor for capitalist greed, for the loss of Israeli innocence. Mashiach in this song has two meanings. It's the name of a wheeler dealer, and everyone, it's a group of people who are waiting for him to show up at an office and tell it and brief them about what's happening with the collapse of the stock market. And instead of Mashiach showing up, a, a policeman knocks on the door with bad news, I'm sorry, but your friend Mashiach jumped off the roof. And this is the great protest song against the failed messianic dreams of socialist Israel. Al Hadvash ve Ala Orkets, Nomi Shemer's great anthem about return to the land, about the need to protect what we've built. Uh, it has this beautiful line, al nata akor natua, don't uproot a sapling. And this song, because of that line, became the anthem of the movement in 1982 to protest the withdrawal from the Sinai Desert, even back to Egypt and the Israeli Egyptian. As part of that agreement, we uprooted uh, 18 settlements, thriving agricultural communities, the town of Yemit. And so this song became an anthem for the Israeli right. But it's such a powerful slogan for the right because it resonates for, for so many others. <laughs> Yitziat Mitzrayim, the exodus from Egypt, at the Ankri. This is a lament, a lament about the biblical archetypes of the complaining Jews in the desert who didn't appreciate the miracles that were done for them, about the hatred among the Jewish people, uh, hatred among brothers and sisters, uh, the hatred of Joseph's brothers toward Joseph. In this song, Eti Ankri is really raising the question, did we ever really leave Egypt? Are we as a people prepared, are we able to overcome those poisonous archetypes, which are so deeply embedded in our origins as a people in the biblical story? and which sometimes it appears as if we are fated, doomed to keep playing out over and over again in our history. Sha'ar HaRachamim, the gate of mercy. This song is Again, one of those classic Israeli songs that speaks to so much of the pain and the struggle and the hope of being Israeli. The song takes its title from the gate of mercy that exists within uh, the old city walls in Jerusalem. Uh, it is the one gate that has been sealed. And so, of course, that becomes a metaphor for the closure, uh, the inaccessibility of mercy. And this song is a plea for opening up the gate of mercy. Meir, Ariel, Barakusha. Finally, 
we come to Mayor Ariel's great song, Avarnu et paro na'avor gamadze. We got through Pharaoh, we survived Pharaoh, we'll get through this. And in the song, Mayer actually avoids all of the obvious obstacles, struggles that Israel faces. It's not a song about war and peace and terrorism. It's a simple song, or at least deceptively simple. A citizen who feels overwhelmed, like the citizen in the song Ezo Medina, What a Country, who feels overwhelmed by bureaucracy, by taxation, who can't cope with the encroaching technological world. This song was released in the early 90s, so it's the beginning of the internet era. And Mayor Ariel, kibbutznik, grew up in the same kibbutz as Shalom Chanoch of Tammuz. Mayor was a paratrooper who fought in Jerusalem in 1967, went on to become the great bohemian voice in Israeli music was one of the first to sing about drugs and homosexuality and, and the, the Palestinian tragedy and bringing all of those loaded subjects, loaded at the time, today much more normative, but bringing those suppressed topics into the heart of Israeli music. <laughs> And in this song, he reveals why he is one of our most beloved musicians. And I should add that he died at age 57 in 1999, one of really the greatest losses in this generation uh, for Israeli music. And what Mayer does so beautifully in the song is combine his frustration with the smallness of Israeli life with his deep connectedness to the larger picture of Israeli perseverance and Jewish survival. And these songs in the aggregate tell us something essential about what it means to be an Israeli. And that is, we complain, we criticize deeply, we are aware, acutely aware, of the faults of our society. And at the same time, without feeling any sense of dissonance, any sense of contradiction, we are passionately in love with Israel, with Israelis. And I hope that these songs will give you some small indication uh, of why that is, of the vitality of Israeli culture and the love affair of a people with, with, with its story. Chag Sameach, happy Israeli Independence Day. Thank you for listening.